Hey folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to a new Unity tutorial. Now, it's been a while since I made the last video, and I needed something kind of easy to warm up on and get back into the groove of things, and then I decided, hey, Flappy Bird is all the rage right now. Why don't we use that as an excuse to make a clone of that game in 2D and learn the new 2D tools that were introduced in Unity in uh, the more recent version? You know, they've been out for a couple of months now, but we haven't really done a video for it. So, let's create a new project, store it in a location, set up our defaults for 2D, and hit Create. And we're going to take a look at that. So, the Unity 3D 2D tutorials, that's kind of a weird way to say it, are pretty straightforward. In fact, the system basically works the same as when you're working in normal Unity and working with 3D stuff. Uh, the exception being that um, your camera and your view is locked to just the X, Y axis. There's no rotating the camera around to whatever. Now, you can toggle back and forth quite easily by hitting this 2D button over here. This will let you switch back into your normal sort of 3D mode. But if you hit 2D, then you will be locked in this direction. And having created the project with everything set in 2D uh, sets a couple of things up differently with your main camera. It puts you in orthographic mode, for example, and arranges the camera in a certain direction and makes life just a little bit more convenient for you. I suppose uh, for most of you, your layout might be something like a two by three or I don't know what the default layout is. Something like this, no, wide, maybe something like that. I don't know. We will, uh, we will play with, um, we're gonna set it to tall and we'll work from there. Okay, so, um, yeah, this is a pretty standard layout. We're going to be fine. Okay, so we're in 2D mode. So, first of all, what the hell is Flappy Bird? Do you know what this game is? If you don't know, it's a game that made uh, a huge splash on the mobile market, both on iOS and Android, and it's a crazy, crazy simple game, and it's a like, big, complicated story, and that's been pulled off the store, and it very, very drama llama kind of stuff. But basically, if I zoom in over here, you can see uh, you've got your little bird. This is the animation sprite sheet that I that is an obvious clone of the graphics of Flappy Bird, which themselves are clones of other things. Um, and so you've got your little bird here, and normally the bird, if you just don't do anything, the bird will just fall to the ground. But every time you tap the screen, again, this is a mobile game, or in this case, uh, developing on PC here, anytime you click the mouse or maybe hit a key on the keyboard, for example, your bird will flap its wings and will gain a little bit of altitude. So part of the game is making sure you don't crash into the ground, but also periodically, or actually quite frequently, you'll get a pair of these pipes that come out. One pipe that comes out of the, the top of the screen, one that comes out of the ground, and there'll be a little bit of a gap in between, and you've got to maneuver your bird to go between the gap and the pipes. And that's it. The game is devilishly hard because the controls are just a little bit, you know, tricky to get your bird to be exactly the right height that you want to. Also, uh, the actual version of Flappy Bird has a very uncompromising hitbox. In Cloney Bird, we might go with a slightly more reasonable and easier to manage hitbox. We'll see exactly how it goes. So I've made this little sprite sheet here based on heavily copying elements of the game. Obviously, this is for educational purposes, so uh, hopefully that's okay. And we're going to bring that into uh, Unity 3D over here. Where do I have that stored? I have that stored um, somewhere over here here did I not oh that's right I did a copy and drag one sec sorry I forgot that I moved things into a stupid spot let me um, drag my graphics into my project folder right over here so we've got that into unity now um, I should probably make some folders you know what the game's gonna be simple enough we're not gonna need folders but what other thing I like to do is switch a couple of my uh, screen elements around here uh, let's uh, let's bring the game down here to split that up let's put the um, let's put the project into one column layout which I think is very very handy to do uh, okay, this is a decent start. So we've got uh, we've got our sprite over here now because we're in 2d mode by default when we bring our element in here It does set the texture type to sprite of course texture would be the normal uh, but by setting it to sprite, what it does is it um, prepares things a little bit for use in the uh, in the 2D program. Now, specifically, we don't want to be in single sprite mode. We want to be in multiple sprite mode. And let's click the sprite editor button and see exactly what that does. So that opens this window here, which brings up the same graphic that I had open in Photoshop. And what we can do is define individual graphics within this one image. So why are we, we working this way with one image? The reason is that it's actually much faster, much more optimal to build a program where you have one single image to send to the video card every frame instead of, um, I don't know, a, a couple of dozen here maybe if we split up all the numbers into individual sprites. By doing that, there's far fewer draw calls being sent to the actual, um, to the actual video card and it makes things run a lot faster. You send one image there, and then when you draw things on your screen, you just tell it which section of the image to use in every little bit. Saves a lot of memory, saves a lot of draw calls, makes things just run much, much faster. And luckily, the Unity 2D tools make that work a lot easier for us. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? I just realized I have to, 
Um, I have to make a quick change over here because right now if I use, I'm going to use an automatic splicer you'll see in a second and it's going to chop up all this text in very funny ways. So let me make sure I've got the right PSD open here. I'm going to zoom in and I'm just going to set a little background here. Um, just some like some sort of, I don't know, bright red background just behind my text here. Boom. Okay. Sorry, the reason I'm doing that, it should re-import over here. There, close that, reopen it. There we are. So what I want to do is I want to split each element into an individual graphic. Now, I can do that manually if I want to. So you can use the middle mouse button to, uh, to drag around in here, and I can still scroll. And what I can do is I can click and drag and create a sprite around this image. But it's a little bit tedious to do that. So ideally, I would like to use the automatic splicer, which is over here. So automatic, slice. There we go. So now you can see it's drawn a square. An, uh, it, it subdivided my image based on everything that it sees, based on best guesses. Um, and so the reason that I put the background here is just so that it would make this one big chunk because I actually want to delete that sprite. It's not one we're actually going to use. Now, if we look here, the map, it didn't quite do it right. So if I click here, I should be able to drag this blue line over like that. There we go. That looks better. Uh, the ground sprite looks fine. Birds look okay. Pipes look okay. The text is a little bit wonky here. I'm going to go ahead and delete that just by clicking and then hitting delete on all those bad boys and dragging that out that way. Even missed the T there, which is kind of odd. So, oops. The automatic slicer does tend to work pretty well. Um, for everything except like little text things like this because it doesn't quite know like are these supposed to be individual things or not like for example these numbers it did a perfect job there which is exactly the way that I want it and it was just confused over there but now we seem to be in pretty good shape so you can see over here uh, again heavily just copied from the original we've got the three bird graphics here which are simply going to this is going to be my flapping animation just the wing little cha changes just a little bit okay that looks pretty good to me i'm going to go ahead and hit apply there close out of the sprite editor and now if i look at the project uh you can see my sprite here can be opened up and exploded into all the little individual sub sprites that we can then use for our project which is lovely excellent exactly what i'm looking for so in our scene where's the camera there's the camera uh, you'll be able to, well, well, actually, we're going to talk about the aspect ratio in just a sec. Let me go ahead and drag in the background, which is this first sprite over here. And then where's the ground image? There we go. We have it right over there. Now let's zoom in here and we'll arrange things. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to arrange it so that the zero line here is lined up with the top of the ground. Now, if, is it, if you hold control, is it if you hold shift, no, that's just one axis. There's a, I thought there was a way to force, oh, oh, there it is, to force Unity to uh, to snap to a grid. If hold control, but it's not, it's not quite giving me the granularity I want. So we'll just eyeball it, try to get the top of the ground to be lined up with the, uh, the zero mark there, and then we're going to bring down our sky background. And it doesn't have to be arranged at the left. You're going to see why in a second here, but we'll get it. Yeah, there we go. That looks pretty good. The reason it doesn't have to be exactly arranged to the left is because, well, the graphics aren't meant to necessarily move and tile together. That's going to be uh, pretty damn close. Now, let's take this background sprite. So let's call this, um, uh, we're not going to rename the sprite here. We're just going to rename the game object. I'm going to call this uh, BG Sky 1. And I'm going to call this part BG ground one and we're just going to duplicate it a couple times control d and then move it over to the left should probably actually automate this in program code but hang on let me try that again control d hold shift there we go just drag it over to the left that looks better and let's do it one more time. Control D, hold shift, drag it over. I said the left before, I clearly meant the right. Oh, it doesn't even tile right. Look at that. Hang on. There. Well, I guess I have to do the same thing here, don't I? And then this. There. That looks like it mostly tiles okay. And we're going to do the same thing with the ground graphics over here. Duplicate it. I'm going to hold shift just to drag it out to the side. Zoom in to make sure that I don't have a, an unnecessary gap. Of 
close enough. We're going, we're going very fast here. We're not going for quality. We are going for just getting the job done. No, I keep, I keep accidentally dragging up first, which is not what I want to do. There, not bad. Okay, good. Good enough. Now, you can see here, if we look at the game window, things don't look right at all. Now, first of all, we're in free aspect right now. Um, on the on the iPhone 4, 5, the iPad, that sort of thing, the aspect, aspect ratio is 16 by 10 or 16 by 9, depending on exactly what device you have. Same thing with the Android type devices. You can see here, I've got a couple of bookmarks I set up for like the vertical orientations. We're actually going to be playing this one horizontally, so I'll just grab, I don't know, 16 by 10. And clearly things are not arranged the way we want. And part of it right now is because the camera's just set too big. I'm not going to go ahead and rearrange and resize these sprites. Now, you can do it a few different ways. One of the easiest things to do is just change this whole pixels to unit ratio. Um, and you can mess around with that. In this case, I'm going to leave things as is, and instead the main camera here, I'm going to resize it. It's already set to orthographic because, again, we set up our project with 2D in mind to start off with. If you're converting a project that was set up to 3D into a 2D thing, you'll have to manually set the camera to orthographic and maybe like reorientate it. But right now we're okay. But I'm going to just shrink down the orthographic projection um, to slightly too big. Keep bringing it down. That's pretty good. Looks like we're clipping a little on the top and bottom, and that's probably okay. Although, I what, what if I just typed in 1.6? Nope, too big. 1.55. Pretty damn accurate. We're going to call it 1.55 and call it good. Yeah, I like that, actually. That, that should be fine. Um, now, the, the big question is the left and right stuff. Um, if we change different resolutions, you can see that the left and rightness does switch a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure there's tons of background. I'm going to copy all the background sky and ground that we did. I'm going to duplicate all of it. And then I'm going to take the whole thing and just drag it over to the right. And again, try to get the, uh, the background to vaguely tile in an appropriate manner. Um, now, technically, the ground can be moved a little bit differently because it had a little bit more overlap. There we go. I'm going to call it good enough. And now if I take the camera, yeah, we're all right there. In fact, um, the big question is, you know, where do we put the camera and where do we do this? So we're going to have to arrange some sort of system where as we move towards the right, the background tiles OK. Uh, what I'm going to do is set the camera to be roughly here-ish. And I think that no matter what resolution, actually, I guess to play it super safe. What I can do is take the camera and really move it in the middle of all this. Now, no matter what resolution we are set to, the top and bottom will always be perfect. Even if I turn, say, to a vertical orientation, the top and bottom will always be perfect. It's just a question of how much left and rightness we're going to see. And the mo maximum left and rightness we're going to see is about in the 16 by 9 kind of configuration. And even then, we've left ourselves a little bit of padding. I'm going to call that pretty good. I'm going to hit Control S to save my scene, and I will just call it scene to start off with. You know, I'm very original that way. Okay, great. Next thing we're going to do is get in a, our bird and make sure that things are working okay. Now, if we look through here, we can see we've got a bird at number 12 and then at 18 and then at 29. So if I grab 12 and I hold control and I hit 18 and I hit 29, I'll have all three sprites selected. This is going to be my flying animation. So let's grab all three of these and just drop them into my scene. And you'll see what happens is it prompts us to create a new animation. Okay, let's call this, let's call this the bird flapping animation. Okay, so it's added a couple things to our project. It has added this thing. What is this? This is an animator as opposed to an animation. And it's also added an animation called bird flapping. So, all right, let's 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 zoom in here. And we're gonna hit play. We're not on maximum, it's on play, good. We're gonna hit play and see exactly what happens. You can see our bird sits there and flaps. It happens both in our, in our preview, in our editor window over here, and also in our game window over there, which is great. Let's, let's figure out exactly what's happening. So, um, you know what I'm gonna do just to arrange things? I'm gonna create an empty game object here. I'm just going to center it. I'm going to go and call this one underscore BG, background. Use the underscore just to guarantee it's to the top of the hierarchy. I'm going to grab all the background elements. You'll notice I also made sure to center my background, 0, 0, 0. I'm going to grab all my background elements and just stick them in there. That way I can hide all that stuff and not worry about keeping an eye on it. Then I've got my bird here. So I'm going to call this the, um, 
That's a good question, actually. Do I want to add stuff on this level? Always the question, do you want your graphics to be on your main parent object or do you want them to be a child? And it's always better, so I will do that again, to, um, we're going to create an empty over here and we're going to call this one the player bird. And I'm going to grab these sprites and stick it inside the player bird object. Now the sprites themselves, I'm going to center inside of their parent and the player bird, oops, why is that at Z negative 10? None of that is right. That's very strange. Player bird, we're going to set Z zero. And uh, well, actually, should I center it? No, that's not that's not what I want to do. I'll put it in vaguely the middle of the scene over here. We're going to figure out a better position for it later. Okay, and again, if I hit play, everything is fine. The actual sprite is contained within an empty game object. But other than that, it's flapping around. Okay. So we've got that. What is going on in the sprite? So the, again, the game object is empty. The sprite itself has what components? Well, it has a transform. Obviously, it can move around. Okay, that's fine. It's got a sprite renderer, as opposed to a mesh renderer and a mesh filter and all those things that you're normally used to seeing in 3D. It's got a sprite renderer. Now, in background terms, in terms of what's actually happening behind the scenes, the, um, this is actually creating a, a mesh, a quad, okay, two triangles. That uh, so a flat plane and then it's putting a texture on it. The texture is the one sprite graphic that we've got on there. But internally, Unity is doing a, a variety of different optimizations for this, um, so you don't really have to worry about it. But basically, it's pointing to a single sprite. And if we click on the sprite, you can see it's currently pointing to sprite number 12. Although, if we hit play over here, you will see that this changes. It cycles between 12, 18, and 29 as it plays the animation. In fact, I suppose I could rename this object to something like bird. Um, graphics, right? There, just to differentiate it from this clony bird sprites object down here. Bird graphics, it's currently pointing at one particular sprite, but as it plays, it will cycle between 12, 18, and 29. All right, that, that's one thing, that's great. And the material is the sprite's default material. We're just definitely gonna leave that by now. Sorting order and order in layer, because the background and the foreground, we wanna make sure that you're seeing the right thing. If for some reason it's not working, you'll, you'll notice that every single one of these has an order in the layer. You can change some things that way, although you can also just change it by messing around with the Z order. Oops, I'm using the wrong thing. Hold on, hold on. Background, there we go. Okay, I had one of the sub objects. You can see that if I bring the Z axis negative, that will bring us towards the, tel the camera, right? The camera's at negative 10, so negative is more forward. So if I bring the Z forward, the background is currently overlapping my bird, and if I bring it positive, it's currently behind the bird. If they're both at zero because of sorting orders, you know, it, it's the bird happens to be in front of us, but just to be safe, I could actually set the background to say a one, just to guarantee it's always rendering behind everything. And for something really interesting, what you can do is you can switch off the 2D mode, and then take a look at exactly what's going on in your scene. You can see quite clearly the bird and the background, they're just planes, they're just quads and they have textures applied in front of them. But we're gonna stick in 2D mode because that's what we're trying to do. Great, okay, we've got a bird, we've got that. What do we wanna do next? Do we wanna put in um, the pipe object? No, I think what we're gonna do next is actually start to uh, add basic controls to our bird and make it move around. So we're gonna continue that next time.